Hello out there in Streamland. You might be wondering, gee, what day is it, Sven? It is Wednesday. What time is it? It is 10.30. So what does that mean? Prepping for Starfinder as a GM in Fantasy Grounds Unity. I'm checking to see if I am up and running. And we will get rolling here. We have a lot to do today, so we are in our every other week in Starfinder. We do. Oh, it looks like I am ready to go, rocking and rolling. I don't like the dice behind me because I am not playing right now. So let's fix that real quick, like. I use XSplit VCAM. There's a free version. I forked out the money so I could uh, not have the little logo there. But even when you do have the logo, it's not the end of the world. Um, I've seen several players who use it, and it's really not that bad. Try to get myself here in the middle. Stuck in the middle with me. You are. All right, there we go. Close enough. We're doing Dawn of Flame. So, I need to brush up a little bit more on what their... the bad guy starship can do. They're in the middle of the starship. And then we can get ready for story so let's pull up the story first boom waking the fire so I'm now using a handy dandy little notebook to um, keep track of what I need done in my see if it's gonna work for me no, it's not. Well, you're just going to have to believe me. I wouldn't lie to you. Just to keep track of what needs to be done. So far, I don't have any notes for... Dawn of Flame. But after Sunday, I know I will. So... Checking out a couple things real quick. I do have stuff for Dead Sons. All right, so they're in the middle of a starship combat. With a whale. Yep, that's what they're fighting in the middle of space. It shoots flame. So I'm looking for where the, it talks about the starship combat for the whale. Um, here it is, augmented fire whale. Here's their starship. All right, so he can bite. He has a breath weapon. Can we just smoke? This is what I was looking for. So, it is so immense that it functions as a starship. It has no crew, but can still take crew actions using the skill bonuses and ranks. Modifiers for its size, speed, and maneuverability have already been factored into the stats. And here's the table. Yes, sir, mobs 2R. It's a pretty intense uh, creature. This is a... Uh, it's got 40 hit points. It has a shield. Not only is this a menacing creature, 
mobs, but uh, it's also been augmented. So um, it's been given a, a more powerful heart, um, and it has some um, Mark I defenses, some a little bit of armor. Um, it breathes fire. It's pretty intense. Um, I think we've got one other picture. So this is a starship, and this is the whale. <laughs> it's the same size as the starship. Atomic Hero Squad, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you showing up every day. Uh, it means a lot. Reminds me of the white whale from the anime RE0, but more hunter-esque, monster hunter-esque. Yes, monster hunter, yep. Yeah, I think Paizo did a good job when they came up with this critter. <clears throat> um like I said, it can bite the starship, it can breathe fire. It's pretty cool. It's been pretty fun. Um, what I had not been doing, which I need to do, which is why I'm double-checking it today, is doing stuff like... Um, so each round, it can try to heal its own shields, transfer them around, stuff like that. So I need to uh, do that because it's hurting a little bit. Uh, it's taking eight damage. Uh, it's lost some of the shields it's down... Fight 10. Let's take a look at his shields. So his uh, starboard shield is completely down. And his forward shield is down by to 4. So you can still take crew actions using the skill bonuses. Alright, so the skill bonuses he has are... All right, I don't see skill bonuses here. So let's look over here at his. Don't know why it doesn't have his um, bite on here either. It has his augmented fire breath. But it doesn't have his bite. Uh, he has a bite of 2d4 and a, with a plus 4 to hit. Alright, so I'm just going to sort of wing this then because... Let me look in the book one last real quick just to make sure. So I have the high speed book. to see if it has, maybe it's just missing the uh, fire whale. Skill ranks. You can do plane shift once a day, interesting. Here it is, crew actions, engineering, gunnery, and piloting. Yeah, that's interesting. They must have missed that when they put them in there. All right, so I'm gonna make a quick note. Will it let me tweak it? It will. Okay, so. I will put it in the modifiers. So he has a engineer of five. He is a gunnery of four, which should already be there, but just in case I need it for some reason. And then he has piloting of 10, which is in there already. So now I can at least use his, his engineering to repair the shields and stuff like that. Very cool. So let me make sure. Yep, it's there. Good. All right. So then what they're going to do. And then this ship here is what they're chased is what's being chased by the whale initially, and then they turned around and uh, it turned around and started fighting them because they were shooting at it. This thing was just so, is sort of dead in space, um, and by sort of 
dead in space, I mean absolutely dead in space. And so now what's going to happen is as soon as they kill the whale or drive off the whale, they're going to go into the ship. Let me show you the GM map. See, boom, that's what it looks like. So they'll be coming in to one of the cargo bays here, I believe is where it docks. All right, so this is the map for the ship. We'll turn off the line of sight so we can see what's going on. Here's the airlock. So there's a statue that got destroyed and that's in this area here where the airlock is. And once they actually get into the cargo bay, there's nothing there yet. But then in here is the shrine. And in a shrine, they meet this little critter. So he has existed only since the ship passed through the far portal, which has been a maybe at this point, five to 10 minutes. That's it. You Knows nothing of the ship's origin, only that the, there's a spirit that chased him out of another area. Welcome to my temple. Speak your wish and it shall be granted, it says. All right, so I need to fix this because... So I'm using a special font generator that makes the fonts much clearer to read and much bigger um, for my players. But it does have the disadvantage of quotes and apostrophes become squares sometimes. So I had to fix that. All right, so where is this critter? Here he is, boom. I wanna take a look at him and see what else he can do. So he's a tiny creature. Okay, I have to remember that. He has confusion. So if he bites somebody, confusion is cool because what happens is every round they have to make a, they roll a percentile, one, from, uh, one to a hundred. And there's 10 different options of things they can do. Um, everything from just staring off into space and standing there doing nothing to acting normally, to attacking the nearest person, um, to babbling incoherently. It's pretty cool. Um, All right, and it has the ability of fleeting. The chaotic energies that created him, and he ceased to exist within 100 hours. Okay. Random energy. It's unstable shape. Grants it fluctuating energy attacks and immunities each round. Determine which energy applies. Roll a 1d8. So he can do acid, electricity, sonic, cold, and fire. And it randomly determines every turn. Okay. Every time it takes a turn, he sh changes its shape. Might look like other tiny creatures, but it can resemble objects, abstract energies, shards of matter. Interesting. Okay.
So I'm going to make a little, I'm going to make a, um, let's see, do I have the ability to write in here? It is locked. It is unlocked. I do. Okay. All right. So some of the small, tiny objects it would have seen in here. Let's see. He was in A4, it said. So looking at the GM map, A4 is down here. All right, so let's see what was in A4 engineering. Okay, so tools and diagnostic gear for servicing the ship's engine. There we go. So let's make a list. I don't think it's going to last more than four rounds. So we're going to do six things as its original form, and then it's going to change into a, so one of the characters has, let's see, it should be under shift. So I like to keep all of my player characters, pictures in the hotkeys. Um, when you hold shift, it changes the hotkeys on the bottom. Gives you a whole another 12 of them. Here it is. It's a palico. So he's going to change shape into this, a palico. Second, next round, it's going to change into a electrical current. Gauge. Is that a gauge? What's the? It's not really a scanner. It's a meter. Electrical current meter. So it's a tool. The next round, it's going to turn into a computer monitor. And it's going to go back to its original reptilian form. Then it's going to change into a chair, a rolling chair. One, two, three, four, five. One more thing, let's see, something small that would be in the engineer. Um, what is in here? What's in this um, shrine? Ornate brass sconces, there we go. An ornate brass sconce. I'm actually going to move that up because there we go. All right, so changes into a palico, then a Norbertine brass sconce next turn, a current meter, and back to his form. A rolling chair if he lasts that long. Very cool. And meanwhile, it is attacking people and. Very cool. All right, so they will learn that. 
He won't be much of a challenge. So now what's in here? Let's see. This is the car on the other cargo bay. There's nothing here. Back to the other airlock. May they might come through this side, which shouldn't have anything. Nope. Okay. All right, so once I come through these doors into here and then down here, I definitely want to change the grid. The grid is really dark, so making it, you can change the color. You can also change the opacity of it. So come on, maybe. There it is, middle of the screen. Turn it down, make it less opaque. I'm also going to change it to like a yellow. There we go. So it's more of a neutral. It can still be seen, but uh, much, much easier on the eyes. Okay, come on. I think I clicked it like 12 times, so. Uh, some cool, well, cool thing I learned though, is you can click this, the color picker, and I can go to, like right here, or you can go to the color of the flames. I'm going to go to the color here of this gold. Click. So now that's the color of it. And then we just turn it down. I had not realized what the color picker did before. All right, so there we go. So now we've got our grid a little bit less blatantly jarring all right so this is home to a hesper named tefix damage done to his beautiful engines in a recent combat has driven him senseless with grief he waits only long enough for the intruders to spread out in the room before attacking screaming his vengeance how dare you All right, so let's see what a Tefix is, shall we? He's a medium fey. Is this the guy that spews radiation? It is. <laughs> All right. So it doesn't have a picture in here, though. That's weird. Let's go to our images. So the cool thing about the Tefix is, what? Oh, I spelled it wrong. And this is a playable race, actually, if I'm not mistaken, is they can, let's check that real quick, see if I'm right, cause a spew radiation PQRST. Oh, okay, I guess not. Um, so I was wrong. Not playable. But what they do is they spew radiation and can cause you to mutate. Deliver such an enormous dose of radiation with a touch, triggering sudden mutations. It causes the target to sprout tumors that erupt at the beginning of its next turn, causing a random mutation. <laughs> And it lasts for 24 hours. That is so cool. All right, so is the mutation in here? Is the uh, table in here? It's not. Why isn't the table in here, guys? Come on. So he, gains, he has fast healing, which is nice. All right, so he has fast healing five. I don't think this is targeted. I mean, this is uh, coded in there. Let's see. 
it is not. Okay. Very cool. All right, so I need to put his picture in here, though. Jeez, come on, people. What are you doing, folks? So you'll notice that when I hit enter, it got rid of the special font. So if you click within that line and hit control two, it'll change it to a heading again. You can also right click on it and, and select the paragraph type and that will make it a uh, thing. So now I have the link within here so that I can look at it in the others tab. I'm also going to find the table where is the table? Table. So let's see if it says. All right, mutating touch. There it is. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Why is there two? Are they the same? One d twenty. Yes, they're the same. Okay, so we will then add this table to the creature. Again, not sure why they didn't do this. Um, this is not a really an early, this is like the third, I wanna say, adventure path that uh, Paizo came out with. Maybe this, maybe, might've been the second, but I think it was the third adventure path. So I'm not sure why. There are so many things that they missed when they converted it, but that's okay. Let me just see out of curiosity. Does the Tiffix Dawn of Flame? Really? This is only here? Okay, I've seen the Tiffix before. It's in um, Alien Archive. Do I not have the Alien Archive up? Let's see. Dead Sons. Alien Archive. Alien Archive 2. Alien Archive 3. That's odd. So I wonder why. Is it called something else in the Alien Archive books? It should be under... Huh. Weird. All right, anyway. It's a cool critter. So that's what they'll be fighting in the engine room. Um, if for some reason to then head up north instead. So I only have two and a half hours. So I don't expect them to go much further. But just in case, I'm gonna check there are some rugs. Ooh, a magma elemental. Again, I'm gonna fix this. All right, so there are hookahs, VR headsets. One of the double doors is being attacked by the All right, so I'm going to make a note. All right, so this is a recreation suite is what this is. Curtains of red material frame murals of brass starships flying through the skies. Fiery skies, okay. So this is what the magma elemental looks like. Okay, so I guess it's not fire and flames. All 
mild intoxicants for smoking. Work 200 credits. Nice. That's a cool looking magma elemental. I like that. So let's take a look at this. Um, See exactly what he does. He does, let's see, a lava burst and a slam attack once per day. A pool of lava that covers its space and spaces adjacent to it in three inches. The covered spaces are difficult terrain until the lava cools. Creatures that move through one of these spaces or occupy at the time of the burst take damage and gain burning condition. After one round, it cools, and it's good. Very cool, so it sort of... <laughs> spews out this lava. Cool. I like it. All right. So, and that's going to light the rugs on fire, wherever it happens to be when he does that. Okay. All right, so that gives me an idea of what's happening, what's going on with here. Um, I've made the changes I need to make. Oh, I need to add a, a note in here in the shrine. Because they can hear after the fight. So right here, I'm just going to add a note. Cap locks after the fight. A successful 15 perception check will allow a PC to hear faint banging sound from the north. So that is the magma elemental pounding of the door trying to get out. All right, do I have any other notes for um, does not appear like I have any other notes for this group. Let me double check and make sure that I fixed everything that needed to be fixed for. I'm still surprised about the Tiffix because I own the books that have the Tiffix. It's right here, Alien Archive. Is it three or is it uh, two? So you got the book. Um, let me see if they're still called Tiffix. Maybe they're called something else and that's why they're not showing up. But I remember that picture. Okay, so it's not in a three. Do I own any of the other books? Just 
skimming through here looking for the picture of him. I don't see it here. Do I? Um, character operations manual. Yeah, I picked up the Alien Archive 3 because in the Alien Archive 3 is where companions are covered. And I have used it. Uh, it's impact. I don't. It's not impact world. I know that. And it's also not in a character operations manual. I know that. So yeah. So the character. Uh, the Alien Archive Three has the um, companions, uh, and my players love the using the companions. And so we've definitely used that uh, aspect of it already quite a bit um, so it's worth picking up the book even if you don't use any of the other stuff in there um, it's pretty cool oh they do have turtle people <laughs> the telia okay also called um, uh, maybe I just looked at the, the other book maybe it's not in here but uh, anyway yeah uh, the tortles from D&D 5e. Actually, I don't think they've ever been officially. There's a total package that came out. Um, and I think it's still considered Unearth Arcana. Uh, but they're from the area of Chult and stuff. Um, and they've been popular. I've seen them used quite a bit, and I've used them myself. The turtles. The turtle people. Turtle. Turtle. Turtle from that silly movie master of disguise all right well hey i guess it's not in this book but i do remember reading about them maybe i just borrowed it from a friend because i know for a fact giant space tardigrade and what's funny about this is there was, i just saw a cartoon called the deep about um, this family of people who are in a submarine and do stuff for the ocean and things like that. And they uh, went in and to another alternate dimension where there were these giant tardigrades. So that's pretty funny. All right, so yes, it is not here. The Diaspora Worm. Very cool. I'm gonna have to use that against my other group. All right. So let's go ahead and since the the tiffix, I don't have it. Turtley enough for the turtle club. Absolutely, turtle, turtle. Uh, let me show you the uh, race. Um, damn it, Jim. Now, uh, just take me a second. My people, I have a mushroom person. That's one cool thing about, uh, here they are. Um, Telia. Starfinder is, as of last count, which was, and I know it's gone up since then, um, where's the image, people? Serious? Last count, there was 128 races that were available to be used by players. So there's probably double that that can be encountered, that they have statted out and everything. But of uh, that can be used by players. There was 128. So there's your turtle, folks. Turtle, turtle. Very similar to the turtles in D&D. And I have a, in my homebrew campaign, I have these pair of merchants who are selling turtle shell shields and armor and stuff. Um, which at first glance you think, oh cool, 
a total shell shield. And then you stop and think about it. How is how are they obtaining these shields? This is a sentient race. And all of a sudden he has all these shields. Um, so it piqued my interest, my player's interest for about five minutes, and then they f promptly forgot it and moved on. Hey, Mr. Dan Dazzle. He... So we're going to switch campaigns real quick, like. We've got a few minutes left. Um, lurking while working. Loading, loading my other campaign, which is engage. There it is. Boom. So we've got Atomic Hero Squad and Dan. Appreciate you gentlemen stopping in, saying hello. I really, really do. I'm in that very, very early stage where every person who stops by is a big deal. <laughs> Hopefully one day I'll, I'll be able to look back and say, I remember the days when Atomic Hero Squad and Dan Dazzle were the only ones who would come in every day. As I say hello to my thousands of fans. You going to be uh, streaming a little bit later there, Dan? It should be a good 2021 for the semester. Nice. Yeah, so I'll, I'll uh, I too will be uh, doing a lot more of this, uh, prepping for my um, Dungeons and Dragons campaign and uh, um, and my Starfinder campaigns. So I'll be on the computer most of the day till till I start gaming tonight at five. I mean, uh, six thirty. So I will definitely check out your stream this afternoon. See what you got going on. I noticed Atomic had changed it up a little bit. Have been trying some new games. I saw on the Twitch announcements. I'll be watching Atomic tomorrow. He beat Jump King today. Nice. Yeah, aren't you, uh, Atomic, aren't you in that realm of people who can uh, beat it pretty much in like under half an hour? I know in theory, Dan claims it can be done in five minutes, but uh, he's there now. Okay. Yep, he's up. Uh, I thought he was. Yep. Yeah, so this is a new theme. So it's the same game as I just had a minute ago. But the look is a little different. Um, what I'm doing on this one is I am building my... My characters are going through a skyscraper. Going off book. So I'm having to build everything from scratch. Let's see, I've got um, wrong one. Where's my 16th floor? I still don't have the map in here. Okay, I got to put the map in here. Go to images. Finish our first run. 15 minutes is our record for now. Okay, not bad. That's really impressive. Um, I'm watching you guys playing a significant improvement from six hours. Absolutely. I was going to speculate that's probably what it, you would have to start off with um it's amazing so uh plus it has all the different fast uh versions of it so i especially the wind section took our guy alienated 69 hours to beat it, <laughs> it then I, I would probably be up there if, if, uh, well, as I've said before, to be honest, I don't think I could last half an hour before I just said this is dumb and couldn't just rage quit. Um, so 
if I didn't rage quit, it would probably take me quite a while um, to, to beat it. Especially that, like I said, that win section just seems, if it was just constant all the time, I can understand you could learn it, but it slows down and then reverses direction. The speed varies. I don't know how you guys can do that. Um, But Dan says he loves it. Dan says it's really nice and it's relaxing and he just sort of gets in his zone, the jumps king zone, lets the endorphins flow through his brain as he sits there and jumps and jumps and then falls to his death and jumps some more. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, and I don't mind watching it. It's, it's actually um, pretty enjoyable to watch. I was I was surprised. When, I, when he first started doing it, I was like, man, I'm going to be switching this, and then an uh, hour and a half later, I'm still watching him. <laughs> uh, so, of course, uh, Dan also makes it, uh, his comments and stuff are enjoyable. And he actually interacts with his viewers, which is nice. Because I've had several podcasts out there where I've streams and stuff where I've talked to, to them and nothing. They're just crickets from, from their side. Anyway, 16th. Skyscraper 16 is where I am now. Yeah, they started working their way up. And they're actually in the 16th floor. I'm going to put take this out link my map in here boom 16th floor so now you have access to it wherever you go hit enter so now whenever you hit enter on a, any kind of link NPC image item encounter it automatically makes this little link symbol so to get rid of that, you just hit Control-1, or you can right-click and change the paragraph style in your story. So the concept of this floor is that they are it is an exercise floor. The entire floor is an exercise room. And let me show you. So you've got the track, the running track. They go on around the outside. They have four, like, squash. Uh, racquetball court type things in here. They have two bathrooms, locker rooms. So this is a shower. If you zoom in, you can see it's a shower and a sink on the other side with some what's supposed to be lockers on this side. I will be honest, be the first one to admit um, they don't really look like lockers, but hey, closest thing I had. Um, so there's lockers over here. And then... Um, This room is going to be free weights, and this room is going to be uh, cardio. And this room is, is a classroom. So the classroom, I've determined I'm going to have them be forced to do a um, workout. So they're going to come in, the doors are going to shut, holographic person is going to show up and if they don't do what they're told to do they're going to get a shock and the shock is going to increase every time they 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 don't do what they're supposed to do so they're going to have to get on certain locations little highlighted circles on the floor and they're going to go through probably a half hour routine a lucky uh Jazzercise, yoga type thing, different, different. Um, they can be relatively simple things to start off with, and then do a little bit of cardio. Um, and every time they they don't conform, they're gonna have these vague outlines, holographic outlines, and so you just move your body into that form. So it's gonna be possible for them to do. It just uh, are they gonna be stubborn enough not to do it? Uh, so. 
we'll see how that plays out. That'll be fun. So what I want to do here first, though, is let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to change the color of the floor. So you'll notice I changed these floors. I'm just going to change the color on this one. Um, and you can do that by adding in effects. Let's see, walls and doors. So I'm going to stick it on court floor. Do I want to put it in court floor? I'll just make a new one. So this will be um, FX, add an FX layer. This one is going to be um, just the color, adjust colors. So we're going to make it, uh, let's go with a little reddish. And bring down the green and the blue. I'll make it brighter or darker. We'll make it darker. All right. So we'll go like that. Makes it a little bit more ominous. Now what you do is you go to apply enable mask, which gets rid of it, and then you reveal the area. So you go click. So only this area is that color. Okay, um, that's a little no, that's really bright. Um, okay, so we'll leave the brightness. We'll turn down the red. Whoa, it makes it black. All right. Um, red is a danger color anyway, so I don't necessarily want to... Uh, there we go. Bring the green up a bit uh, so it'll still look like it matches the rest of the floor a little bit. There we go. That's more what I was looking for. And you want to make it a little brighter. All right. So that's so that makes the floor look different without getting crazy. Nice. All right. Um, I'm going to put in a little token in there. So we'll go to our assets bag. And we're going to go to our Letters. So I have a bunch of letters. Ones I have black, futuristic, brown, C, and um, so I'm going to go just go with black. So when I use ones that the characters are going to see, I always use futuristic because they're cool. So we're just going to go with room one. We'll just say this is room one. So we slap it in there, and then because uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and put we're also going to have in the weights room a maintenance robot will be glitching and attacking them. So two boom. All right, and so uh, if we go here to the play, right click on the token, you can then change the visibility to where it is always invisible. So you can still see it as the game master, but the players will never see it. So then on your in your story, you can then put Room one, room two, 
simple as that. So room one is the, what is that? Um, let's get physical. Going to have a female Kish. And a pink leotard and purple leg warmers leads the party in a routine. Oblongs light along the floor. Oblongs. Oblongs light along the floor. To indicate where the PCs stand. Once they lock into one, leaving the oblong or not performing the correct move causes an electric current or electric charge the second one does one damage damage increases by one for each infraction so we're going to make it six challenges Starts with acrobatics, DC fifteen, and increases by two each time. So parentheses, one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I'm going to have a start with um, between 10 and 25. I'm going to have it be between 10 and 20. Instead, 10. This way, just because of the way dice work, they will fail some, but they do have the chance of getting them all. At worst, they take, what is that? One, three, six, ten, 
14, 19 damage at the most. Not the end of the world for these guys who have close to 150. Some some of them have uh, hit points, so. Acrobatics, DC 10. All right, and the other thing I wanted to do was check and see if I had any kind of exercise equipment in my modern furniture that I bought. Yep, I went and paid for these. All right, so I have bathroom, bathroom, bedroom, bedroom, cardboard boxes, commo, oh, commode, <laughs> like homo day, what is that? Uh, cabinets, chairs, couches, Copy machine, coffee tables, crate mat. Let's see what this is. Okay, it's a freaking cover, desktop computers, dishes, double beds, entertainment. All right, let's see what we got for entertainment unit. All right. Okay, so actual entertainment centers. I don't need that. Fans, floor lamps, fridge, glass tables, hall tables, kitchen sinks, stove, bunch of kitchen stuff, nightstand, nightstand, office, oval tables, rectangles, toilet, a wardrobe, a television, shelves, and a sound system. Ooh, a sound system would be fun to have in the... Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be in the classroom. So we go to our layers. Come in here to our... Come on. Room. And we'll put one of these in each of the corners. All right, so we're going to add a new layer. Layer. Um, let's see. I'm going to just, uh, yeah, I'm going to add it. So what is this? Add folder. Add wall. Add painting layer. Boom. So this is going to be the exercise room. Come on. Click, click. There we go. Exercise room, and we will stick you there. Boom. Point two by point two. No, we want it to be. Uh, let's try one high and. One half point zero point five. Dang it, Jim. All right, so I have it opposite. It's opposite day, folks. Zero point five. This is going to be one. There we go. We have the stamp, so we go bloop. Perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and put, we will flip it horizontally. Bloop. Okay, and then we will take this guy, drop him in there, 0 0.5 by 1, 0 0.5 by 1. And we will slap him down here. Oops, what happened? There we go. Uh-oh. Why is it the wrong color? Um, no, it's not what I wanted. All right, so 
0 0.5, 51. Why are they put the wrong color? And we're going to flip, stick them here, boom. All right, so let's see. Oh, I think I put it. All right, so it's not adding them like it did the other ones. It, it's putting them in the painting layer, so that's why. So control Z, get rid of all these guys. All right, so now let's click on this guy, okay, and then go. Flip. Perfect, now we've picked the selection tool. All right, so what had happened was I had selected the painting layer, which then made it red. So that's why. Uh, so now we select it and we move it. So what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and add a folder instead. So we don't need him. He's gone. Trash. Add a folder. And the folder is going to be... Um, this is the classroom. Take all these four, shift, throw them up into the folder. Boom. All right, so now we've got four speakers. <laughs> I love it. I like it. I love it. All right. Um, Do I want to have All right, if I really want to take the time to do so, I could put a token of her in there and then I could have the highlighted areas where the characters are supposed to stand. But, you know, I'm not really going to worry about it. Uh, I don't want to take the time it would take to do so. Um, I still want to find some exercise equipment. Even if I have to take some sort of a, like a picture. So let's go to the Google, shall we? Make sure everybody. All right, so everybody's still hearing me. Um, we will start with. Microsoft Edge, living on the edge. All right, so we're looking for clip art, exercise, exercise equipment, clip art. Nothing what I wanted. Wow. Okay. Um, let's go back. Uh, let's go there anyway and see if there's something maybe along the lines. This might work. I might be able just to throw in some of these. Let's take a look at this. There we go. So it's not the exact down, top down. This might work. Um, all right, so let's see if there's anything else worth grabbing. This is not bad. I don't mind that. That's not bad. It's too bad it's the only thing that's like that. Because once we put them in as an asset, I can change the color, so I'm not really worried about things like this. Let's 
see. This one's not bad either. Uh, no, that's just too black. Just too black. So it's not enough definition. That's really cool. Um, I like the style. And I like the color. I really like this one a lot. Um, all right, so it's sandwich. It's between this one and the first ones. So let's take a good look at this one again, and then let's go back to our first ones. All right, I'm going to go with the second one. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Where'd it go? it is boom all right so this is decent can I get a better shot by going there boom save image as all right so right now we're in fancy grounds portraits I'm just gonna stick this in pictures for uh, mm, 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 mm. It is officially Starfinder. Um, I'm going to put it on Fantasy Grounds maps, though, because I want to make them tokens. So we're going to stick them in tokens. And I'm actually going to... Can I make a new folder here or not? Uh, let's see. Equipment. Xer. Equip. New folder. Okay, good. going to be Starfinder Tokes uh, Items Starfinder Item Extra Equip Save Alright So now what we do We go to the Google. Spencer with the goo goo googly eyes. And we go to pixlr.com. This is phenomenal software, folks. If you like Photoshop, Pixlr is the way to go. Um, X is the easier one. E is the one I'm more comfortable with. It has more options. Uh, so we, uh, oh no. Anyway, what I just said, all that is true, but this is not what we want <laughs> for what we're doing. All I'm doing is I'm going to make tokens out of these things. So rolladvantage.com is the way to go. All one word, Roll Advantage. Brings you um, the home screen of Roll Advantage is this. That's all there is to it. There's a dice roller. Pretty cool. Token stamp is what we want right here. Boom. And when it comes to making tokens, this is so fast, so easy, so amazing. You have so many choices. You have all these different things you can screw with. It's so good. I've used almost everything. I don't think I've ever messed with the overlay tint or the overlay uh, opacity. But um, everything else I've messed with at some point or another. So, we're going to pick our image, which will be the one we just saved. So, that'll be under pictures, under um, stuff under. No, it wasn't. It was under maps. In tokens and Starfinder items. Boom. Open it. So now we're going to just start at the top. Zoom out. Bing, 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 bing. So go here. We go to this small square. And get rid of this. The border tint is going to be white. 
That's one choice. Or you can just get rid of the overlay op op opacity. Oops. To where it's almost completely um, clear. And that way they won't see it that much. All right. Shh. Oops, come on. Now we just fill in. And if you're wondering what it's going to look like, that's what it looks like. See, you can't even see the the uh, outline, which is what we want. All right, so boom. Shrink it just a smidge so it'll fit in this hole. Now, if I really wanted to be anal, do I want to be anal? I don't. So I'm just going to go put um, so now I'm going to uh, stretch it so it, we, we get rid of that thing in the bottom. Let me stretch. Shrink. Boom. There we go. So we have our weights. Free weights. Download. And now it'll ask you, gee, Sven, where do you want this thing? Well, I'm glad you asked. I want it under my tokens. And I'm actually going to stick it in mod furniture. Just plain mod furniture. And this is going to be, this is free weights. All right, so now we're going to move over to Treadmill. And you're like, but Sven, you've got this big, gross white part on top. I do. So I go here to background color. White. And now it's gone. Download. It already puts it back in where it wants, where I want it to be. And this is the treadmill. And now we have, all right, so this one I'm going to have to mess with later. And that's fine. I'm good with that. Bring it down. Perfect. I don't know what this is called. Sorry there. People, let's see, zoom it down just a smidge. Okay. That is correct, okay. Download, so I had to fix this one. Free weights, treadmill, so we're just gonna say. The multi-machine. It's odd that this is so low, but because normally you would have this higher, but that's okay. So we have more free weights. So again, you look here, see what it's like. See, you got this little tiny bit peeking out here. We don't want that. So we will. Tweak it till it's gone. Tweak it till it's gone. Tweak it till it's gone. Mm. Mm. All right. And so now we've got free weights, multi, treadmill. We have straight. Free weights. All right, and so now I'll show you real quick. So now that you have the idea, you don't need to see me do every single one. 
Um, now we go to Pixlr, go to Pixlr E, we go here to open image, and we go to where I just made all those tokens. And we grab this guy. <laughs> See, and what I could do is I could make these pings and just delete the white. So you just have these images. And that way the floor would shine through. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. <coughs> Excuse me. And probably make the floor white. Or maybe not. We'll see. Depends on, on how it looks. But anyway, so here, now we have all the things you can do in Photoshop. <laughs> Zoom in a little bit. And the um, clone. The so clone is my friend. I use the clone a lot. And then we just get rid of this. There we go. And now we just save it as same thing it was. It's called multi. Download. No, it's a JPEG. Oh no, tokens are pings. Never mind. And now we click. This is the one we want to replace. Save. So watch the magic, folks. Are you sure you want to replace it? Yes, I do. Close. And now, refresh, folder assets refreshed. We now go to modern furniture. Bing, 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 there they are. We come over here to our weight room. Wait for it, ah, see what it is there? Weight room, wait for it. All right, and then, uh, come on. Everybody gets nauseated because I'm moving the map so around, around so much. All right, so now we put our free weights. So we're going to have the mirror be all along this wall, maybe even on this wall as well. And then um, we will throw this down. Boom. So these are tokens. So I can uh, adjust them and move them as needed in the play using the play. This is the multi. Uh, this one. Um, so I could do this as a as a paint layer. <laughs> the only difference is I can't mess with the sides with this one. So I I want this one to be like it is. So we'll put these. Um, these are being actually pretty close to each other. Put him here, boom. And then uh, it all depends on how many I have. I'll put the other tokens out here, uh, depending on what's going on. And then we'll put um, and then a treadmill goes on the opposite side. Bloop. Just gonna have rows of treadmills. I don't know what other tokens I have, so for now I'm just gonna put one row of treadmills. These are five foot squares, so five foot squares work just fine. Um, if I don't have any other treadmills, then I'll just probably put another row and another row. One, yeah, two more rows. Um, or maybe like put this on a half one and then put another one here, something like that. I'll figure it out. But that's, you have an idea of what's, what's happening and, and how it works. And last thing I wanted to show you guys is the outer track. So I wanted the outer track to be more of an not an asphalt, but um, I've been inside and in, you know an indoor track, uh, and most indoor tracks are like a dark, uh, like a fake, mushy condition uh, thing, rubbery 
substance-ish. So what I'm going to do is similar do the add effects, change the color. Just like we did before, and this time we're gonna just gonna make everything darker. Darker, darker to about there. I like that. Alright, now we enable the mask and we reveal the area. So we can just go poof all the way to here. Same thing on the bottom. Oops, too high. I'll fix it in a minute, guys. Just calm down. Boom. And then we can just go right up along the edge here. There we go. And then you zoom in. I have the nice shading around the walls anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But what you then do is hold Alt. So let's do this little weird section first. Boom. I screwed it up a little bit, Control Z. Hold Alt, go up. Like I said, um, because of the shadows, I don't have to make it perfect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zip over here. Oh, what happened? There we go. Try this again. Alt. Just drop down under there, and then we just bring it up. Try to be as close as plausible. Boom. Boom. See how our brightness, what happens with our brightness. We can make it a little brighter. There we go. Boom. So they can see that it's still crenellated and stuff underneath it. Ah, you like that? Crenellated. Ah, ah, fancy word. I presume I'm using it right. The little hash marks. Crenellation. Boy, I'm just messing this all up. What it's doing is just revealing this area, so if I reveal it multiple times, it doesn't matter. It just means that the whole section is revealed, so. And what I mean by that is I'm not making it darker or, you know, by revealing it multiple times. It's just, it's, it's fine. So the whole point of this is that this is a track, and so it should look a little different than the rest of the floor.
Oh, Alt is my friend again. We zip up and around. Boom. Now we come along the wall here. And if you guys want to see how these two things I'm doing today, all this work I did, if you want to see how it looks in play, Sunday nights at 5.30 Pacific. We play until 8. If we're not there right at 5.30, just bear with me on Twitch at uh, Spencer 77 um, give me a little bit of time sometimes it takes till about 540 or so but usually I'm, I'm we're getting better the players are showing up on time and it's getting a little bit better so I do my best to be on as close to 530 as I can All right, so there we go. So now we have our track. We'll fix this part up a little bit. And you can zoom in as close as you want. There you go. All right, so there's there's the running track. It's a little bit different color as uh, everybody else. Got this room, which is the, the room, and then you got the weight rooms and the freestyle room. What happened to all my tokens? Ah, uh, when I did a control Z, I must got rid of the tokens. All right, so that's it, folks. I'm gonna let you go. I'll be working on this myself, uh, filling in the holes, finishing up. Um, but you guys have the basic concepts on how to do these different things. If you have any questions, leave comments or join me. Every Wednesday, 10.30, I do the same thing with D&D &D on Tuesdays. You can watch us on Sundays, see how this gets actual use in live play. But whatever else you do, enjoy the rest of your day.